Um, I'm sorry, guys. My hot take is that I'm tired of shonen hoes. Shonen anime is not good. I mean, you don't mean that. I don't mean that. I like shonen <laughs> anime. What is up, y'all? Welcome to episode 121. Yes, sir. On this episode, we talked about Chainsaw Man and how they had some big sales compared to the regular series <laughs> <laughs> with another specific type of media product produced about Chainsaw Man. What we got next, Jay? We also talked about um, our anime um, coming out for summer 2023 Facts. and how we really feel about them. So if you guys really want to tap in on that, follow along. And of course, you know, me and Kev just have some crazy anime hot takes that we want you guys to chime into. So without further ado, let's get this episode started. Let's get it. It's over 9,000! Yo, what is up, y'all? What is good? Y'all know the vibes. Keeping in 9,000. Anime conversation from a NYC. POV. Shonen with my... Bronin. You know the vibes. Yes, sir. Come on, son. Jay and I have been doing this every week for 121 episodes, fam. Give us a fucking clap. Give us a quick clap. We are doing this for y'all and because we like talking about anime. What we are is we're an anime conversation podcast that mainly focuses on just opinion-based anime topics. Yes, sir. We're not trying to be right. We're not trying to give you all of the facts of anime. There are some facts that we can definitely give you. I can put my glasses on real quick. Hit a little 100% thorny. hit you with that little quick kabuto. But the vibe of this anime podcast is just to be... It's just to express opinions within conversation. That's a fact. Nothing more than that, nothing less. Sometimes we'll delve into a couple of different things, but that's the overall general concept of the podcast. And if you're listening to us for the first time Hi. or the next time, hello. Welcome to welcome the club, back. bro. Welcome back for y'all who've been listening. But make sure y'all do this specific thing. Y'all got to follow us on Instagram. Y'all got to follow us on Twitter. Y'all got to follow us on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. And also join the Discord chat. That's we are it. having a lot of different conversations in there. We mention a lot of different anime news in there. And we just talk about random anime topics. Join the chat. Be a part of the conversation. Because at the end of the day, we ain't going nowhere without y'all. And also share the content as you see it come up. Because we don't blow without y'all. And we have, we're at a place where we experienced new growth recently. But we want to hit that place again. Because we only want to move forward. We can't move forward without y'all, so definitely tap in and make sure the people that you know tap in. Put in your group chats. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your church group. We talking about anime and it's fire. Yes, sir. So, man, anime has been good yes, this sir. past year. I mean, I think every every year I just feel like anime gets better. I don't yeah. know. Or maybe is it is it us growing more into uh, into the into the genre of uh, of con like of media? I don't know. I think the what it, I think a big part of it is there's so much anime being produced that there's more opportunity to find good anime. Yeah. Back in the day when we were watching anime when we were younger, we were kind of just stuck to whatever the cable channels or <laughs> for me terrestrial channels provided us. Yeah. Now we're at, we have the opportunity where we could stream whichever anime that we want whenever, like straight from Japan. It gets dubbed, and then we have access to it. That's a fact. Simulcast done in two seconds. Facts. Live. They get in it. We get in it, which is kind of fire. Yeah. Because I used to be jealous. I was like, wow, I'm really like 10 episodes behind because yeah. we just can't Japanese. get it. Because I don't <laughs> speak Japanese. That's crazy. You know? So it's, it's really good, man. Uh, but what's some new stuff that's going on in anime, bro? So... Anime news. This is a uh, so little nasty news for y'all freaks out there. Oh man, it's keeping it nine thousand. <laughs> keeping it sixty nine thousand. If you catch what I'm saying, three X's replace the O's. <laughs> yes, nine X X X. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we know how popular Chainsaw Man is. Yes, sir. Chainsaw Man is super popular. So everybody's streaming it. Everybody's buying the manga, and people are also buying Blu-rays for the first series for the first season of Chainsaw Man. Okay, interesting. But. There's something of Chainsaw Man that's selling more than the Blu-ray of the first season for their that sold more in its first week than the season one Blu-ray of Chainsaw Man sold within its first week. So what was that? A Chainsaw Man porn parody. Interesting. Okay. So, well, I think with a Blu-ray, and nobody buys Blu-ray like that, which is understandable. Yeah. First week of Chainsaw Man first season Blu-ray popping out, it sold about one thousand, almost like just under two thousand, I believe. The Blu-ray for the porn sold just under nine thousand. 
<laughs> the porn went over almost over nine thousand. If you catch what I'm saying, that's kind of fire, bro. Nine thousand, one hundred. Oh my god, y'all nasty. Yeah, nasty, bro. Y'all nasty, nasty. Oh, you know man. what? You know what they called it? What? Yes. I don't know. Denji's day off. No, no, no. So chainsaw man. The reason why they call it chainsaw man is because there's a man who like utilizes chainsaws as to, his weapon as his weapon to kill people. Yeah. So if you're a dude in a porno. What do you think you would use, utilize as your weapon to, you know, kill something else? Your dick? <laughs> a tool. Oh, okay. Oh, whoa. A tool. <laughs> yes, whoa. What's R- fucking... Rope? <laughs> nah. A rope man? Nah, nah, nah. It's something you could hold in two hands and probably Ooh. attach to your forehead. This is a... I don't even know. What is this? <laughs> what is this? Dildo man. Dildo they, man. Yeah, they just went straight for it. They were like, yep. Dildo man. Denji the dildo man. Denji the dildo man. That's yeah. crazy. It's a porn. Um, not gonna lie, I watched a bit of it. Okay, yeah, the sample of the product. And it's it's Japanese porn. That's crazy. <laughs> so everything's blurry. Wait, is it is it live action? Live or? action. Oh, I mean, oh. If it was a hentai, I wouldn't. No. Okay. No, I'm not a hentai guy. Yeah. A parody guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, only nasty niggas watch porn patter- parodies, and uh. I'm a nasty nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let y'all know. <laughs> Just to let y'all know. Oh man. <laughs> Subsequently enough, out. I'm a nasty nigga. Um, but yeah, it popped out. It's it's just parody porn, bro. It's, yeah. not, it's not a big deal. It's okay. it's kind of weird to be honest with you because they show J- Denji with the chainsaw man um, mask on too, but he doesn't have like the chainsaw man thing. It's just like literally a a suction cup dildo just on the forehead and him holding two of them what the fuck yeah it's it's strange i wasn't really into it to be honest with you yeah um but after the after the first three minutes when i bust and everything it was just like, <laughs> i'm joking it, it must have been that lit that people bought nine thousand copies of the, the yeah. dvd for it must have been something bro that's crazy but also i didn't realize that was like a business in japan like people parody anime to, into porn all the time like they made a weathering with you porn they made like a bunch of other ones too yeah. um which oh shit i was about to be like how do how do the manga companies as like litigious as they are not sue them over it but it's like there's parody law so you can make a parody or whatever the hell you want i That's imagine that exists in japan as well you remember mad tv and all that like yeah mad parodies i mean shoot, you, you ever seen hbo at night <laughs> they had xena the, the warrior princess spoof too like <laughs> They was really doing it. Yeah, but what is it? It's like rule 32. Anything that can be a porn will be a porn. Yes, sir. Yeah, so Chainsaw Man, <laughs> congratulations. You got a porn parody. <laughs> That's kind of fire. You know what's crazy is that like when when, um, when, we, when I first read the brief, I thought that um you were referring to there's like this like there's like this one scene on Twitter that went crazy mm-hmm. and it's like basically like a Chainsaw Man hentai, mm-hmm. but it's short. It's like not that long of a mm-hmm. of a clip. But it goes crazy on the internet too. Mm-hmm. I thought you were talking about that. I didn't, nah. I didn't know this was live action. Nah, like, live there's action, a whole bro. DVD of a man with a dildo on his head. A whole DVD, man with a dildo on his head. That's Two crazy. dildos in his hands. Like. That, that actor is making money now. I'll tell you that. He, he. Hopefully, hope. I don't know. Actually, no. The industry over there, you probably not. He probably did not make money. He did yeah. it for fun. It was a passion project. <laughs> he did it for the strength. Facts. <laughs> yeah, but for y'all who are interested, it's called Dildo Man. Feel free to, you know, get your nasty. Um, Get get your nasty and move in on that. Um, and yeah, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> That's crazy. I got some news for y'all too. Uh, yeah. while we wait up, so not only is uh, remember last week we talked about or last episode we talked about Oda and uh, his problems with um, drawing, like with his eyes and stuff, mm-hmm. but also the creator of uh, My Hero Academia is also going through major health issues. Yes. As he goes through creating his uh I guess literally in his final saga mm-hmm. of his masterpiece like he just he's deteriorating cuz like you know it's it's hard like he wants to produce the best product ever and it's yeah. like you only have so much time to get the best out. Yeah. And the, you know like literally honestly there is always a way for a manga cut to kind of just kill it in four chapters. Yeah. But that would suck. It's rushed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think, like, to your community, like, do you want to do that? Mm-hmm. It's tough. Yeah. Um, That sucks to hear. Like, he, is he that sick where he's going to, like, pass? Oh, he's not going to pass. But, like, you know, it, it could, like, you know, mm-hmm. it, could, it could definitely mess him up, too. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, the manga of My Hero gets better. Um, Damn, bro. Went from porn to this. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had no other point. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, um, in all seriousness, hopefully the creator of My Hero gets better because we love the content that you make and yes, sir. we want to see you like live a long and fruitful life. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, like taking some time off will help with that. Facts. For sure. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, man. Uh, anime is just doing, like I said, anime is just doing this thing this year. Uh, summertime is coming though. It is. Like summertime's kind of here. But yeah, we got like like two weeks left, yeah, yeah. basically, roughly. Like it's it's been a good spring. Yes, sir. I I can reflect on some good anime. What's some what's some anime you watched this spring? This spring, um, uh, definitely watching House Paradise. Y'all know the vibes. I can't stop talking about it. Yes, sir. I'm watching Demon Slayer. Um, this isn't an anime that came out this spring, but I'm finally getting into Tokyo Ghoul. Nice. I'm trying my hardest to catch up with One Piece, but it is tough. The Thriller Bark arc of One Piece, it's not a fun arc to watch. No. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Thriller Bark is ass, bro. But I'm I'm making moves, and I'm doing my job as a person who hosts an anime podcast, and I am watching One Piece. Good shit. Um, I think that's about it. How about you? Uh, you know, um, heavily delusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm get on that. strong on that. That anime is good as hell. Um, I really love Hell's Paradise. I read the whole manga this this spring. Um, I actually started rereading the um the Chainsaw Man manga because I feel like where I'm at right now in the manga, the latest chapter, mm-hmm. there were some details that came out, and I was like, bro, I think I sped read. Like I read too fast, mm-hmm. so I'm just trying to like like take it all in again. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else am I on? I re- I rewatched some old stuff recently. I got I got Crunchyroll now. Nice. Yeah, I got Crunchyroll now. So I've just man don't have to watch anime allegedly no more. Yeah, allegedly destroying my computers. <laughs> <laughs> Might have destroyed my laptop, but <laughs> that's another story for a different day. Don't pirate. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Unless you have to. Unless you have to. Demon Slayer has been doing its thing, and yeah, that's that's probably been my manga journey. You know. My favorite manga and anime of all time is on a hiatus until August, so it is what it is. Of all time? Of all time. All time is crazy, bro. Nah, there's no all time. I'm still alive. There's no all time. All time is crazy, especially feel, for that to be it. I feel like when I'm on like my like like you know my last like deathbed or whatever, I can be like, these are my all time anime. Because mm-hmm. honestly, it all just depends on how I feel mm-hmm. and what mood I'm in. Because I feel like when I'm in like a really good mood, it really shifts. I'll be like, yo, I love these anime. And then when I'm in a shitty mood, I'm like, fuck these anime. Fuck they, these anime. They, they, they bring back different memories. I don't want that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, honestly, like, this is just like a thing with like top tiers and like tier lists and shit like that. Is like, it's actually really just all subjective. Like, and yeah. subjective to a time period, not even just to like personal taste. It could, t- it could change so hard. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. So, all those people saying that One Piece is a number one anime. No, no, like it's just a great anime. Like yeah. it's good. Yeah. Well, embrace it. And get ready for the hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, I just made a clip. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but getting into anime that we are watching during the summer, we have a bunch of anime that are dropping. Mm-hmm. But I'm only really interested in three, bro. To be honest with you. Okay. First one off the bat, let's talk about it. Jujutsu Kaisen season two is dropping this. Literally this next month. Yo, it's gonna be a good season, man. Um, mm-hmm. for those manga readers who are already up to date with Jutsu Kaisen, y'all know the vibes. Like, G- season two of JJK is literally like crazy. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get some beautiful backstory of our boy Gojo. Bruh, about time. Like, for y'all who love Gojo, which is everybody, mm-hmm. like there ain't nobody who looks like yo. I hate Gojo. <clears throat> we get to see Gojo when he was a kid. Like, which is gonna be pretty interesting. We're watching, Go- we're seeing Gojo right now, where he's just like he's peaked. Yeah, he's at his strongest. He's probably not getting any stronger. We're going to see Gojo before he got to the strength that he is currently at now, which is gonna be fire. And it's it's kind of cool because it's like you you really get to see his personality develop. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fights he gets in, man, he's Gojo. Stop playing. Like like y'all been waiting for this action. Like this whole red plus blue equals purple shit is like so minuscule to the the like. The core of him and who he is as a uh, as a sorcerer, like mm-hmm. he really puts it down. He's really Mister Six Eyes for no for a for a reason. You feel 100%. me? hundred percent. And you get to see his relationship with him and Ghetto because in the Jujutsu Kaisen movie, they you get to see them mention like, "Yo, Gojo and Ghetto were boys." Yeah, for sure. Like Besties. they were out here. 
People they were besties. Honestly, they were out here, but yo, Gojo and Ghetto's like combination was kind of like like Jiraiya and Orochimaru. Like mm-hmm. they was really running through like like every <laughs> yeah. single mission. Like like it wasn't like they were just some regular sorcerers. Like nah. they were those niggas. They like, were the ones. Yeah. They were them. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Like they had a great team. They were hymns. Facts. And then they got a, they got a rent on the team. Mm-hmm. And then, you feel me? So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we ain't going to give it away too much. But the interesting thing about this season is like it not only gives you more backstory about Gojo and Ghetto, but it gives you more backstory on like the lore of Jujutsu Kaisen. Yes, like it starts explaining certain things a little better. And it like develops a series as a whole even more just from it going to the past. One thing I will give away though is... If you're expecting to hear, see any story about like Yuji and like the main crew of Jujutsu Kaisen, don't. Yeah, unless there's a part two to season two, like yeah. there's really not going to be much about the main the main guys at all, which is fine. I mean, maybe y'all mad because we didn't get a Yuji movie as well. We got um mm-hmm. we got our other boy in the last movie too, mm-hmm. the um, the JJK movie Zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, but like like you need to build the world. One hundred percent. You know, so that's what's going to happen. But also, this is something I just realized off of reading the latest chapter of JJK. Mm-hmm. The concepts in Jujutsu Kaisen are like learning calculus. Like you have to know all the rules mm-hmm. before you can learn the formulas to understand how to do Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. Like it's crazy, bro. Like I'm so exhausted. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. Oh my god! Like so, yeah. we'll get a lot of that. Like you know, the the who's the who's the maker of JJK again? It's um oh yeah, Gege. Yeah, yeah Gege. He really be putting in the work. On these concepts, like trying to build out the world and give you like something beautiful, I feel like he definitely draws. I don't even think he draws inspiration from anything. I think he just does his own thing. Yeah, he definitely draws inspiration. He he's been out saying that he drew inspiration from um, Bleach. Mm-hmm. I think One Piece too. Bleach, One Piece. He's mm-hmm. giving a little Hunter Hunter too. The mm-hmm. way he be like explaining midway through chapters, like, all right, guys, this whole chapter is just going to be based on the fact that this um, one one. Power, what is it called again? The Black Fist. Mm-hmm. This is how the Black, Black Fist, the Black Flash. This is how the Black Flash works. For those who don't know, mm-hmm. like which is smart. Crazy. It's just smart. It's a good tool to like keep your reader aware of what the actual, like, <laughs> what the actual like moves and like you're providing them with a glossary. Yeah, but like not a full page glossary. Just like in the middle of each story, you're going, hey, this is what this is. I think that's helpful. It's a good tool. I'm excited to see how he does it, though, in the anime, because, like, you know, in the manga, he really be wasting mad page chat, like, mad page space on that shit. So, hopefully, in the in the anime, he doesn't explain too much. It'll be, it'll probably just be one of those transitional sequences. Yeah. Hopefully. It's like, all right, he hit it with the black flashes, what does it cool done. Back to the action. Please. Exactly. Yeah. No, but JJK is going to be fire. It comes out two days before my birthday, July 6th. Yes, sir. Um, and... It also takes place in 2006. That's another thing I like about Jujutsu Kaisen that I think it does very well. Excuse me. Everything doesn't happen sequentially in this series. Yeah. Like, we had season one, and then we had Jujutsu Kaisen zero. Yeah. And now, season two, it's literally, like, just years before Jujutsu Kaisen zero, Mm -hmm. which I think that's fire. Like, I've never seen an anime really do that, where it's just, like, the whole focus of this, this specific section of the series is focused... Like in a time that is reversed from the direction of the time that the series is going. Yeah, I mean, my boy just loves world building. Yeah, like, he loves inspired. building out his his universe. Nah, he does it so creatively too. Like mm-hmm. JJK, it's it's the most mangas on this show for a reason. Love JJK. I do need to continue to read it, but that's a story for a different time. Yes, sir. All right, that was JJK. Next anime that we give a fuck about, Bleach, bro. Bleach Core 2 okay. from the Blood War arc, son. Bleach is, we all saw the last core, not all of us, but if you haven't seen it, that's on you, fam. Like, you are missing peak anime. What did Akil call it? High fiction? Oh, uh, yeah, high fiction. Bro, that Bleach first core, high fiction. Facts, bro. Like, you can't deny it. And for those who say it's not, then, like, Marquise, <laughs> just hop on a podcast and have the argument with us already. <laughs> Please. Yeah. I can't. I gotta give it up to them. Like they did it so well. The past core yeah. animation, beautiful story, beautiful, and just like the amount of episodes that they were able to put so much into was just fantastic to me. I don't know how you feel, but I just loved every step of it. And I can only see them repeating the same thing in season two. Yeah. And we have so much new shit that we're gonna see that will just better the story more. So we're gonna meet the royal guard, oh, the, the people, the who, realest people in the in the game, son. 
fire people who take care of the soul king or make sure the soul king like lives and bruh so fire we're gonna see new bankais we're gonna see new character growth we're going to see uryu make some decision that we're not gonna get into but it's a decision for your ass bro bleach is doing his goddamn thing it's it's in the big three for a reason, and it's ce sure. it's cemented its spot. Everybody used to be like, "Does Bleach really belong in the big three? Bruh, after watching the Thousand Year Blood War arc, first core, and I guarantee when you're watching the second core, you're gonna be like, "Nah, it deserves to be where it's at." That's a fact. I mean, I'm excited for Bleach. I think that uh, the first core was good. Uh, I think that it's very cinematic. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this is my personal opinion on Bleach. Like this last final thing, I don't think it should have been an anime. I think they should have made a movie, like a movie series out of it. I don't know why. I just think that you, you would have got more out of it. You feel me? Like watching it weekly is cool, but like the way that everything is plotted out in the series, like it's already kind of beautiful. We might as well just give it the budget it deserves. You feel me? All right. Like it doesn't really need to be serialized. I thought you, I brought out the blicky because I, I was about to get near you, bro. Oh, no. Nah. I thought you were going to be disrespectful, but I'm crying. It's okay. But yeah, like that's, that's how I felt about that. Like, um, I think that what we're going to see towards the this new uh, this new what is it core or whatever like core. this is going to be the story that is truly what we want like mm -hmm. honestly I was low key a little bit bored in the first half like when it came to story of um of the first half of the, of um the, the new Bleach yeah. um Thousand Year Blood War arc but that's because they were just building up a lot of stuff yeah but then I feel like they really cemented what was going on in that second half like it was just a lot of information you know they did it so well. Mm -hmm. And like the fights, oh my god! I just can't wait to see what they do next. Yeah, I am so excited for Bleach, bro. You have all these shonen battle hoes just going crazy, like, <laughs> yeah. oh my god, how did you not see? Him? He blew off his head with his bunk. Yeah. <laughs> arm flew into the air. Oh, I didn't know Quincy's could do that. What the fuck? Oh my god, I don't even know what side I want to be on right now. <laughs> Man, who would you? What would y'all be? Would y'all be a Quincy or a Soul Reaper or a, or a, a Hollow or Roncar? What would you be, Bruh. You could be one of the three. Like, if I were to be a Quincy, I wouldn't want to be these new age Quincy's. <laughs> like, I don't know what the hell happened. Their blood must have got diluted with something because they just aren't real as, like, the Quincy's that are pulling back up again. Yeah, the OG Stern Raider. Bro, they, yeah. they are wild. Facts. Nah, Quincy's are clean, but they're also Nazis, so I think I'm going to go with Soul Reapers. Okay. What what, uh, what kind of Bankai would you like? What do you mean? If you could make your own Bankai. If I could make my own Bankai? Yeah. In the past, I was, I would have been like, yo, I want something that's just like, that can do something like purely like physical that just creates a lot of damage. Yeah. But nah, I think I would want more like a, a stealth Bankai. Like if I okay. were to choose a Bankai, maybe something that's like, I want something that has like a crazy power that's not like just a huge explosion. You feel me? Yeah. Because you're not like Aizen's Bankai is cool because it's just like, all right, I'm just going to make you see whatever I want you to see and you can't control that. Yeah. Or like... um. Even uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a hard. That's a hard question to ask. Like, I would need much more time to sit down and think about it. Yeah, yeah. Man, I got my answer already. What's it? Man, I'm about to. If if honestly, I don't even know if I would be a Soul Reaper. I'd probably be in a wrong car, mm. like a really strong wrong car. Mm. And I feel like a power that I would want is uh, what you call it, like creating some type of like auto like auto targeted missile like mm -hmm. attack mm -hmm. where like you you can't escape it. It's mm -hmm. going to hit you. You feel me? Like I feel like that'd be kind of fire. Mm. Um, but then, like the thing about that wrong car is that their forms be hella ugly. Like only like the real, t real right wrong car got some really fire transformations. Yeah. The rest of them was really looking just like doofy. basic. Yeah, like yeah. Grimjar had a fire one. Okriyoras was, Okriyoras was kind of goofy. Um, it was just a bat. Um, who else? Nell. Nell. Oh yeah. Transformation was fire. Yeah. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, big no. <laughs> of course, of course. Old and now is wifey for lifey. Yeah, bro. That's you know it's funny though. What? When I make this clip, when I when you say wife, I'm putting little Nell in. Stop. It. <laughs> it's gonna be little Nell. That's now. OD. We don't need that. And when you say world. older, I'm I'm clipping that part out. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be no wifey for lifey. All right, where, <laughs> where, where's my bunk? <laughs> Hit my Shikai real quick. Yes, sir. But yeah, I mean, the, the whole world of Bleach is lit, no matter no matter what, nonetheless. Um, which character are you excited for to see more of in this current, in this next Hitsugaya. season? Hitsugaya. Hitsugaya. I don't know if it's this season, but I'm just excited to see it animated. I don't want to give it away, but I'm yeah. excited to see it animated. Okay. 
can be fair. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I, I just want to see uh, more. More of like the captains, just in general. I feel like a lot of them just. I mean, yeah, of course they all just got fucking like put to shit, <laughs> like washed away. Like I, I just, I really am excited to see every single captain's redemption arc. Mm-hmm. And I guess what I do love about the last season is that it kind of did. It kind of does what Demon Slayer does, mm-hmm. where you know Hashira or Hashira, but they can still get hurt. Yeah. They can still die. You know, mm-hmm. like niggas die every day. Like it's gonna be the same for the captains of Bleach. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Bleach is. Just- Bleach is doing this damn thing. I love it. Last anime we want to talk about. This anime actually, there's a lot of controversy behind it because of the mangaka. Um, it's a reboot anime, that's so true. that's gonna be um interesting to see. We're talking about Roroni Kenshin. So Roroni Kenshin is a story of a guy that was a former just him. He was that samurai. Yeah. Anytime he pulled up, they knew his name because blood would run through the streets. That's but true. Tosai the manslayer, he was the one. Um, and it was like, it was a really popular anime back in the day. I think it sold over 72 million and manga. It sold over 72 million copies and they made it into an anime and the anime was really successful yeah. and it ran from like the nineties up until the early two thousands. And now they're rebooting it, which is a smart decision, but also there's like a lot of controversy with, um, the manga Kenshin, the ma- with Rodi Kenshin because of the mangaka specifically yeah. because the mangaka was into some, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not talk about it, Facts. but Nonetheless, it's still a great series. Um, I'm excited to see it because, like, I, I just want to see it with new animation. Yeah. Because for the 90s, the animation was good. Mm-hmm. But what we can do now with animation, it's going to be fire. To oh, yeah, it's going to be fire for sure. If they have the right studio animating it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, my my gripe with that is that, like, so if they do, I, this, I guess it's more of a story thing. Mm-hmm. But if they redo Veroni Kenshin, I want them to actually start with... um. Mm. With like uh, his whole like backstory, his whole backstory on why he is a Roroni, which is like a masterless um, swordsman. For those who don't know, uh, like you know, he was for hire. Like show him become Batosai the Manslayer. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like like they did it in movies. Yeah. Um, with the with the previous anime, mm-hmm. which was cool, but I felt like that could have all just been like main plot story. So I want to see that. Or mm, they could pull a Jujutsu. Oof. They could pull a Jujutsu Kaisen. And give us the first season and not have the second season be all be that all that and then make the third season the consequences of him being all that from like a specific angle yeah so like they could make the first season him just like going through and people being like yo you were this but he's like nah i'm changed it's like that's not me <laughs> that's not me no more Re- me red friend. hair scar on his face who are you talking about <laughs> no, but i never heard of him but and then they could make the second season him being that yeah. and then the third season when they bring back when they bring old boy with the fire sword oh yeah, yeah, yeah. who wanted to fight him specifically because he was with Tosai. yeah because he was real yes that would be a fire way to do it that's i think i agree i think that would be really good um i don't think a lot of the young heads i mean this is just like i'm aging on aging us but honestly mm-hmm. i don't think a lot of the, the younger generation understands like how cool the concept of Rooney kenshin as yeah. a anime was like y'all don't understand like bro like they still making live action movies about the anime to like into the 2020s Facts. like that's pretty strong of a brand yeah to be honest like yeah. it, and it, was, it was good like beautiful story like yeah no beautiful story um and i saw the trailer for it the animation looks like it could be good it doesn't look like they haven't shown us too much so yeah. i want to be like the animation is going to be great i haven't seen enough to decide that but i'm excited to see where exactly they take it because the story is fire hell yeah yeah. I'm down. And this is just a, a non like uh, serialized anime that's coming out in the summer. Mm-hmm. But uh, so Hayao Miyazaki, mm-hmm. um, owner of Studio Ghibli, is mm-hmm. releasing his, I mean, bro always say this, but his final movie. So he's releasing his final movie into the world. Mm-hmm. Now, I forgot the name of the movie, but here's the problem. There's no trailer. Mm-hmm. Bro literally said, I'm going to announce it and y'all going to watch it. I'm not going to put out no you got marketing. That pull. No marketing. And because he said that, now we're all low-key just yeah. like, so what it looked like, though? Yeah. <laughs> you know? What can we expect? Yeah. Nah, don't worry about it. That's a crazy move. Like, that's a really big dick bro, move. Bro, that's like, some ball of shit, bro. He swung his whole shit. He's like, I'm tired of the industry. Y'all y'all only get in my movie. That's it. Like, He's like, was it Beyonce that just dropped an album randomly? A yeah. Couple, like, mad years ago? Yeah. It was just, it wasn't Lemonade, was it? Or was it? Well... It wasn't Lemonade. Oh, I forgot the name of the album. It was that. I mean, Drake's done it a few times, too. Yeah, where you just don't mention it. You're just like, here. Here. 
By the way. Yeah, by the way, he just really pulled up and was like, yo, you know how I make like some of your favorite anime movies? I'm going to drop another one, but I ain't going to tell you shit about what it was. Exactly. That's, That's so fire. crazy. So I'm excited to see it. Apparently, the story is based off of um, just like he loves kind of bringing in these story points from like like uh, pre-war and post-war, like uh, mm-hmm. World War II, Japan. So it's going to be about a, a guy going through like the struggles of like uh, growing up in that time period. And mm-hmm. apparently it's based off of one of his favorite movies. So actually, let me get let me get the context right. I'll pull up the name of it. Mm-hmm. This is kind of just something that came out my head real quick. Um, right. Okay, yes. So um, Hayao Miyazaki is coming out with a new movie, his final movie called How Do You Live? And it's based off a 1937 novel by the same name. Um, so this is going to be, I don't know if this is if it's magnum opus because he might just drop another one because he keeps saying it's the last movie, but mm-hmm. this is going to be that movie. So if you guys are big Hayao Miyazaki fans and big Studio Ghibli fans, um, don't sleep. Go to the movie theaters because you got to see it because there's no trailer to even get a, a pulse <laughs> on if it's good or not. You feel me? Nah, that's a fact. Yeah. I think I'm going to close this off with a hot take. Okay. We just spoke about Roni Kenshin. I don't know if the anime will hit. And by hit, I don't mean, I don't know if it'll be good. I mean, I don't know if people will gravitate towards the anime. All right. Talk your talk. Why? First, they dropped the trailer. They dropped a, I think it's only one trailer, but like multiple YouTube accounts have posted it. The view count isn't up there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good factor of like determining like if something's going to hit because it's like we're seeing if people want, if it's drawing attention. The view count is not up there. So... It's like maybe like twelve thousand for the last trailer that I saw, which yeah. for an an, for anime is like it's pretty low. Like when Bleach dropped the trailer, bro, it was like three days and it had like one point something million. Yeah, I think that's a factor. Also, the controversy behind Roni Kenshin, I think, holds it back a lot. So for anybody who's new to liking anime, once they find that out, I'm pretty sure they're gonna boycott it because you know <laughs> the society that we live in is like people cancel can't, them. Yeah, people can't separate like art from the artist. Which, like, I, I, I'm not one to say what's right or wrong, but personally, I separate art from the artist. Yeah. Um, like, I still listen to Chris Brown and some other artists I'm not going to mention on this, but, you know. Yeah. No, the I'm music sure. is fire. The music is fire. We've had this conversation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I think for those specific reasons, also, I don't know. I just feel like they're not marketing it enough. I think it's dropping, like, next month. Mm. And I'm not hearing that much about it. Like, I've just seen one trailer. Yeah. Especially like you're an anime that hasn't been out for like over 20 years now and you're not putting any marketing budget into this. You just want this to fall off the strength of be washed off the strength of the fans that were fans of it back in the day. Yeah. It's like I'll watch it, but I don't know if we're going to get new people garnered onto this. So here's my thing with that, right? Like it's kind of hard. You got to understand like Veroni Kenshin in terms of just like numbers, like it's going to do a really shit job because, one, there hasn't been a serialized manga in so long. So, like, you know, that's the thing that kind of keeps a lot of these new animes popping. Yeah. Like, or the, even the Dark Trio, they all had, like, great, like, popping mangas mm-hmm. within the time. So, of course, like, they were just, like, when, when the fans heard it was going to animate it, they was like, oh, we're going crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, that's like, imagine if someone brought back, give me some a show from the 90s. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. You know, that, that too much hype. Uh, something a little bit more. Like, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, That's that like shit. someone going, yo, there's a brand new Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Nah, Young kids will be like, what the fuck is that? I've never heard of it. You feel me? No, nah, no, nah, they did that. They made it a Netflix show, and it, it did pretty well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I don't watch real people TV. I, 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 I keep reminding y'all. I don't know if y'all, y'all are caught up. That's going to be a clip. Oh, um, <laughs> shit, yeah. Like three, four <laughs> really? <laughs> Was it called the same thing? I think it's called Sabrina. Oh, that's crazy. Wow, that's uh, that's new to me. News to me. But they nonetheless. Made it like dark, which was interesting. They made it dark? It needed to be dark. Mm-hmm. It was too cute. I feel like it was very sitcom based yeah. off, you know, just to get the numbers back then. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I just feel like Roni Kenshin is not truly a product of this generation. So it's going to struggle in the mm-hmm. beginning for sure. But I think that if they can solidify a great start like a good first four to six episodes yeah. in mm-hmm. and these episode clips can go viral mm-hmm. on the social media platforms you need to go to yeah, then so it can give the revival revival it needs to become like a a great series again that's fact. you know all right you want to hit us with your hot take and close out oh yeah so um sorry guys my hot take is that i'm tired of shonen hoes shonen anime is not good i mean you don't mean that 
I don't mean that. I like shonen anime. <laughs> Clearly, this is a majority shonen anime podcast. But what I'm saying is I'm low-key just kind of tired of the perspective that a lot of shonen anime like watchers and readers like take on anime. Mm -hmm. They just assume that it's like the magnum opus of anime in general. Mm -hmm. That there's no other better better anime. Mm -hmm. And that's a lie. I think that like a lot of them tend to just close themselves off mm -hmm. because they just think that like, you know, this battle style hard, like whatever anime is the anime that just makes anime what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's not really what it is. There's a lot of different stories, a lot of different genres of stories that can be told. Yeah. And I really just think that like shonen anime watchers need to just Take a maybe take Loki take a break for a second yeah. and just watch some new stuff and come back to their same shonen shows with a different perspective. Because I'm gonna tell y'all, when I was younger, I thought Dragon Ball Z was lit. I really thought that was like peak. Yeah. Then I started watching some other shit and I just realized, oh yeah, <laughs> nah, it, it's respected. It's goaded. It is what it is. But yeah, you feel me? Yeah. Like I don't know. It's just it's kind of annoying. Like watching shonen fans just get so caught up in it. Nah, I feel you because that's. It's like the good thing and bad thing about shonen fans. They're really passionate about what they enjoy. But then they also view it as very like dogmatic. Yeah. Where they're just like, I'm really passionate about this. And there's a huge fan base that's passionate about this. So that means that it's obviously like the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that a lot of them have the ability to look outside of that and realize that they are watching and making these opinions. And they're making opinions and not facts. Exactly. Like you're not, you know. You're not making a fact. You going One Piece is the best anime isn't a fact. Mm -hmm. It's an opinion. It's an opinion, which for sure. is an opinion that you're allowed to have. You can feel however you, the way you, that you want to feel. You could defend your points however you like to defend your points. But at the end of the day, like other people cannot think that it's not the best anime. Facts. Other people can think it's not the best anime, and that's okay. That's really okay. But shonen fans don't seem to have that type of mindset. And I get it. Like, you put a lot of time, you commit a lot of time into watching these. Decades. <laughs> into these, watching Ooh. these shows. And I get it. And I, bro, I ride hard for my favorite anime. Like, That's you you cannot tell me Jujutsu Kaisen is not good. You cannot tell me Yu Yu Hakusho is not good. But I'll let you, you can tell me that. <laughs> you, you cannot make me feel like those shows aren't good. There you go. But yeah. you can tell me that you don't think it's good. And, that's fine. And we can have a conversation about it, but at the end of the day, once we walk away, I'll respect your opinion. I won't call you a dickhead for not feeling that exactly. way. Exactly. I I, dude, I remember when I thought that Naruto was like like literally peak anime. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, recently I just, I've been watching too much other media and just looking at other opinions. And I'm like, I love Naruto. It forever has a place in its heart of where it is for me, mm -hmm. in my heart for where it is for me. But honestly, like, it's really written really, really bad. <laughs> like, it's not the best. But... It has I think, moments. It has but, really good moments. But it has yeah. really good moments that makes it the best show that it could be, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's just that's just my little rant to Shonen um, anime fans. Feel how y'all feel. Y'all can at me. I don't care. You know where to find me. This is going to be a clip anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Let's well, close out. Are we, we done? Uh, yeah, I have to run to Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's almost. Oh, yeah. I got you. All right, guys. Um, thank you for watching episode 121 of Keeping a 9000. Um, you know what to do. Follow us at Keeping a 9000 on all uh, major social media platforms. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that notification bell um, just so you're just alerted every time we upload a video. And if you are listening to this on any major um, anime, not anime, uh, podcast streaming platform, give us a rating. Helps us get boosted up into like the arts and culture category, which is a very densely populated category. Yes, sir. So let's get our anime podcast podcast up there facts so you know what the vibes is man it's been keeping 9000 this is kev to the right jay on the left thank you for always keeping 9000 with us we'll always keep it 9000 with you and we'll catch you on our next episode peace it's over 9000